Hey, Amanda here. We're, today we're gonna go over um, inoculating colonies from a uh, plate, a media agar plate, so a solid plate to liquid media. And w the reason that we're doing this in liquid media eventually will look like this when we grow it overnight. Um, but we need to get one single colony from here grown up into a bacterial culture because once it's grown into a bacterial culture, we can do a couple of things. So the importance of doing that is that we're taking one single bacteria and growing an entire population of cells from that one single bacteria. So we would expect that pretty much it's going to be one genetic, um, one genetically distinct or singular colony that's going to be a bunch of cells that divide into here. And that's particularly nice for us because we will go on to use um, that culture or this culture in a, like in a DNA extraction so that we could do the sequencing and the 16S bacterial identification. But then also we need to be able to store these bacteria so that um, they don't end up dying on the plate. We don't have to come in every two days and keep on streaking them out to keep them alive. We can store them in the freezer in a solution once they are pure. And so um, today we are going to just inoculate one single colony of this uh, TD yellow number three strain that I had uh, quite a bit of a hard time getting to be pure strain before this. So I had to passage it, uh, I think three or four different times before I could get one single colony on here or one single type of bacteria growing on this plate. But now that it's pure, we could grow it in a liquid culture. And then once we grow it in a liquid culture, it has to incubate overnight and we can store that the next day. So I can store this tomorrow, but we have some examples of other stored cultures that we'll work with in another video. So to be able to inoculate a bacterial culture, oh, yep, yeah, wait, hold on. So uh, first we're gonna wipe down our counter. This is the last time I'll do this before uh, we just know that this is expected of you, right? Every time you come into your bench space. So this is just an ethanol solution with water, uh, just a diluted ethanol solution, 70%. Um, and we wipe down our workspace to make sure that we don't get any contamination. Uh, contamination still happens though. So it's not the end of the world. It just is the way that it is. Um, all right, and now we have to turn on our flame. This is the second part of our sterile technique. So we're going to flip on the switch. All right, and then I can put this back. Okay, great. So we have our flame going and now we have our sterile environment around us. Now, the way that we inoculate into liquid culture is into culture tubes. You need Quite a bit of air, uh, like air or headspace from the volume of culture that you put in to the amount of air that you have on the top. And uh, the first thing that we'll do is so these lids are not super securely on here. So if I were to invert this tube, the contents would definitely dump out. It's a vented cap that allows air to kind of keep on circulating through there. So um, no heroics with this. And so that's why you will want to label your tube first. And it's the label is just going to be the same thing as the label on the plate with the updated day. So and you could write yours horizontal, you can write yours vertical. You just don't you just really don't want your label to get too much further down than this bar right here or else your label can start to come off and then if like a very important um, part of your label is there that helps you distinguish one sample from the other it could get rubbed off and you're gonna have a hard time figuring out which one it is and you don't want your experiment to fail because of it it's happened to me um, okay so we have our label on here we know what it is and we have been growing our plates on marine agar and so we are just going to use that same concoction and in the marine agar just has a agar solution or a agar um, component of it that makes it gelatinous. And if we were to not put the agar into our uh, media, then our, our media would be a liquid culture. And so 
We have a couple examples of this and I'll show you which one I'm gonna be working with. So I have my media, it's labeled. And this is the same media, it's just like far less of it in a bottle. So something to note that's interesting about this media in particular is that there's a sediment on the bottom and you kind of can't see it that well. Oh, there you go. Um, so I generally don't like to pull from the sediment uh, or the precipitate. I don't think that it's uh, necessarily a bad thing for growing your cultures, but if you want to quantify how much your cultures have grown, it could interfere with your ability to get an accurate uh, reading of the density of the cells in the culture because it's all based on suspended particulates. And so when your suspended particulates are a part of the media and not a part of the, uh, the bacteria in solution, then you find yourself in a, in a artificially uh, enhanced reading of the cell concentration. So um, what we can see here is that this is in a much smaller bottle. I like to generally keep my, um, my liquid media in smaller bottles because if it gets contaminated, which uh, tends to happen pretty often with liquid media because you're constantly putting something in and taking it out, that um, I only threw in one batch of the, or one smaller half of the uh, media that I've made. And the, the, the stark contrast of that is that I made this one in one liter, uh, in a one liter bottle, but I wanted to be able to process a lot of high volume samples. So it made sense for me to do it in this moment. So something that I worry about is because the particulate is uh, resuspended in here, what's interesting is that, you know, you generally want your media to be this clear color. And if it's not, that could sometimes mean that there is contamination in your media. And in this case, we just know it's the precipitate. And because I've disturbed the precipitate, I'll use just this one today. But um, this is particularly peculiar because if your media looked like this and there wasn't a known precipitate in it, then I would highly suspect that you have a bacterial contamination in your media and you could no longer use it. Um, so I'm just gonna put this back. All right, and now we are going to put the five milliliters of marine broth media into this tube, and then we can put a single bacterial colony in it. And we have to do this with sterile technique. Where we have our, let's see, we have our serological pipette. This is a 10 mil serological pipette. I need five mils of, um, of media. So this is the closest pipette that I have to be able to do that without having to use a one mil pipette and do this five times because that increases the likelihood that your media is going to get um, contaminated, like I just mentioned. So um, to do this is just a pretty simple um, cotton tipped application and you just can um, stick the end of it in there. It kind of moves in pretty easily and you can leave this sheet while you figure out everything else that you're gonna do, if you want, you can kind of put it on here, just make sure that the plastic is, is not touching the ground uh, or the, the counter. And now with your media, sometimes I can do this with one hand and I have one hand doing this and the other hand doing that. But if you find that you're at the top of your media it needs to be kind of cracked before you do anything, you could really just unwind it quite a bit. And now I wanna prepare both of my hands to be able to, um, draw up the media. So um, first, so what we can do is we can put the cap uh, with the top up, with the top facing up onto the counter. And then we wanna pass the top through the flame once or twice. And now we can draw up five mils and you'll see that there's a, the gradations on the side of the, um, the serological pipette. So I pass the media back through again. I have to pass the lid through because I put it down on the counter. And now I will show you the gradations. So I've pulled up just over five mils of media. And the reason I pulled up just over five mils is that sometimes once you break the seal um, with you know drawing media up, it doesn't always keep like a really solid like I guess, suction going upwards. So sometimes we'll get some drippage and I wanna make sure that I don't drip past like less than five mils. Like 
plus or minus, you know, like a half mil, I don't think would ever uh, change anything in terms of what you're doing. Okay, now this is the other side. So now I have my, my like hand, one hand is working with the serological pipette. We're still pretty close to the flame. My other hand picks up the culture tube and uses my first two fingers to lift off the lid of the culture tube. That's kind of a no-no because I should be closer to the flame showing you, but I lift off my fingers and then pass it through the flame a couple of times. Now I can deposit the withdrawn media into the culture tube. And now I have to pass the top of the culture tube again through the flame before I could put the lid back on. Once I put the lid back on, I could put it back in its rack and it gives me, you know, another, uh, another hand to work with my uh, taking off the serological pipette and putting my, that instrumentation down. So from here, now we have a culture tube that's ready to be inoculated. And inoculated is just taking one colony and uh, depositing it and growing up a, a bacterial culture from either another liquid culture or a bacterial plate. And what we are going to do to do this, whoopsies, is use a serial pipette tip and forceps. So these, these tips are serial to um, select the single colony and drop it into the culture tube. So these colonies are still really small. They're gonna be a really hard to see if I like want to select a single one, which is why I put my finger on it. And I am going to select the colony and close to the flame, I will um, use the four tepid, four, forceps and the tips to select that single colony by lifting this up and kind of moving sideways on the plate. So I am going to identify which one I wanna pick up and you can really just drop your tip on it. Like you don't have to use a big swooping motion or anything really, as long as you touch the, the colony, um, you should be able to get good growth in your, um, in your culture tube. And so from here, I again, wanna take off the lid. And so to be able to take off the lid, I have to pass it through the flame. And then I'm going to squeeze the forceps and use one of my fingers to kind of push the pipette tip off into the tube like that. And so now the pipette tip, which was sterile, is going to, uh, it has the bit of the colony on it. And before I could put the lid back on, I need to flame the top of the tube again, put the cap back on. And now it's going to shake in the incubator overnight um, with this colony like replicating again and again until eventually once you do an overnight culture, you get this really, you know, nice uh, kind of opaque in color uh, culture. And some interesting things to note from the bacterial strains that we isolated is that we're getting uh, cultures that are similar to the colors of the colonies. So what we can see is, um, give you two examples here. This is one of the orange cultures and it's like very clear that this is orange, which is super cool. Um, this one is another orange colony and it's not as dark. Uh, this could be, or it's not as bright. This could be a couple of different things. It could be that we used more bacteria to inoculate this one. So the culture grew up faster and um, is starting, is you know going through the uh, like light phase of bacteria faster. And this one could just be a less dense um, culture. They could be two different types of bacteria that produce their um, extracellular uh, metabolites at different times. Um, either way, pretty cool. Something that I thought was very striking was that sediment um, culture, the one that was kind of brown that looks different than the uh, purple cultures. It's very, very brown and it's super interesting. Like I. I don't know if I've ever seen a brown culture like this before, and I'm particularly enthralled with the fact that it's from the sediment sample in the first place. So it's just like seems way too fitting for me. Um, I think that this is really cool. And then the last parts that we can look at are the purple cultures, and we can see there's a bit of purple there. Uh, it's you know kind of 
still whitish in color, but there's definitely like a darker purpley influence on that, especially when you compare that, you know, to the orange cultures, we can start to see those differences in color. Um, so yeah, the next step from here, now that we have um, bacterial cultures overnight, we'll show you the next video is going to be um, storing the bacteria, learning how to store the bacteria for a long term so you can freeze it and you can get back to it and you don't have to uh, keep it alive on a plate or on in culture forever. See you soon.